Women are mages because how else can you describe the pregnancy process? Magic, right? Pregnancy is like the only place where you can experience heaven and hell simultaneously, as was the case with this pregnant woman. However, her doctor took the lead and what he did in her womb impressed everyone. Get ready because the video of the doctor performing this procedure can be shocking, but still, it is not a story you will want to miss. Nick and Vanessa wanted their second child to be born at home. However, in the 28th week of her pregnancy, Vanessa discovered that her baby was considered breech. Before birth, most babies are head first in the mother's womb, but a breech baby is when it is upside down. The couple expected their baby to turn around by the time of the birth, however, the result of Vanessa's ultrasound at week 37 showed otherwise. Vanessa and Nick were determined to have their baby born at home, so the midwife suggested she try the external cephalic version. The baby had been in a position for so long that the mother had some painful points that she could not bear to touch, so the idea of turning her baby manually not only scared her, but it was very painful. She tried several homemade methods to turn it over, but they were not successful, so she opted for the ECV. After the doctor explained the risk of the intervention, they tried for the first time to turn the baby, but Vanessa was still tense because of the intervention, and this made everything challenging. The doctor tried again, but this time in a hospital and he used medication. When he was asked about the procedure, he commented that it worked. Although she had not given birth after the 40th week, doctors told Vanessa there was no need to worry and a few weeks later, Vanessa gave birth to her son successfully. Although Vanessa's doctor did something extraordinary, the story of this woman is so unique that her doctors claimed that they had never heard it happen. Sarah and Adam were desperate to have children. However, 10 years ago, Sarah had an ectopic pregnancy and doctors had to remove her fallopian tube. Therefore, she had no chance of getting pregnant naturally. Sarah and Adam saved $5,729 to be able to undergo IVF treatment. The couple was very lucky because two weeks after the treatment, Sarah was pregnant and after another two weeks, the couple got an even bigger surprise. Sarah was pregnant with twins. The couple was delighted, but at 16 weeks, Sarah was in the bathroom when she discovered she had a lump on her chest. Seven days later, the doctors confirmed that she had breast cancer. The doctors told her that she had to undergo a mastectomy, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy all while she was pregnant. Sarah was worried about her babies. All she thought was how they could survive all that. Her doctors also claimed that she is the first mother they know of who has received chemotherapy while pregnant with twins. Sarah also underwent a mastectomy. Two weeks later, Sarah started chemotherapy. She lost all her hair and also suffered from exhaustion. Lymph node tests showed that the cancer had not spread. She received radiotherapy for a month, and at 35 weeks, she gave birth to her twins. She underwent another chemotherapy that lasted three months, but the thoughts of reuniting with her twins helped her. It was a much stronger treatment, and I felt very exhausted, but every time I had Lily and Jack that my arms, I knew I was doing it for them," she said. Wow, the power of a mother's determination is incredible. Do you remember when I told you that pregnancy allows you to experience hell and heaven simultaneously? For there's no better way to describe this story. Simone was diagnosed at age 15 with a severe congenital heart disorder. At age 18, Simone was told that she would have children as soon as possible. However, Simone did not find love until she was 26 and she and her husband wanted to have children immediately. On her first attempt, Simone became pregnant, but doctors considered her pregnancy to be high risk. In the 29th week of gestation, Simone experienced dyspnea, a slight chest pain, <coughs> swelling, and palpitations. Her health worsened so much that she could not say three words before running out of breath. She was admitted after tests revealed she, she was wet and her lungs were full of fluids. Simone's heart had begun to fail. She was also given steroids for the baby's lungs. Her medication was increased and within a few hours, the medical team's efforts paid off. Doctors told Simone that in a few days, she would have a cesarean section. Simone was told that she had a probability of 1 in 100 of not surviving the operation and 50% of suffering complications. She believed she was going to die, so she prepared her will and wrote letters to her husband and her unborn child. However, Simone's operation went as planned and she gave birth to her baby under anesthesia. 
Simone and her daughter survived. She met her daughter five hours after the procedure and spent 36 hours in the intensive care unit for observation. Her daughter Isabella spent three days in the ICU before her mother was discharged. Simone and Isabella surprised the entire hospital days later when the doctor declared them healthy enough to go home. Simone challenged the odds of surviving the pregnancy and having her baby. Here is another similar story of another woman. Ginny lost her firstborn, Linny, 23 weeks to a Group B streptococcal infection. She was 41 years old, so she and her husband, Rich, were wary of her chances of getting pregnant again. Doctors also confirmed that she had an incompetent cervix. However, the couple was determined to have children. We were desperate to start a family, she said. Ginny underwent five rounds of IVF before getting pregnant again. Still, the couple felt a mixture of emotions. They were glad she became pregnant, but they were also cautiously optimistic about her chances of giving birth. Ginny was pregnant with twins, and doctors suggested she have a cervical suture done at 13 weeks and undergo regular scans to check the length of her cervix. They decided Ginny should rest. Ginny was 22 weeks pregnant when the couple went on holiday to Cornwall. However, her worst fears came true. Ginny went into labor, and it seemed that history was about to repeat itself. She was transferred to a specialist hospital where her babies were born prematurely. I was in shock and just had to put myself in the hands of the experts and hope that my babies survive, she said. Unfortunately, the drama was not over. Jensen was given 0% chance of surviving the first 48 hours, and Reuben between 20 and 30% chance of living. Ginny was shattered. Her emotions ranged from being positive and sinking into pain, but her twins are here to stay. Although they were born prematurely, the children defied doctors' expectations. My following story is about a woman who was told not to get pregnant again, but although she and her husband tried not to happen, it happened and what happened next is even more shocking. Although Allison was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, she and Jason never stopped believing that she could conceive. PCOS is a disease in which the woman's hormones are imbalanced. They started an oral treatment in which Allison took several fertility drugs and became pregnant. She gave birth to three of her five children thanks to this oral treatment. The doctor suggested that the couple undergo a procedure to avoid new pregnancies. Allison stated that they were careful in terms of prevention, but they did not use any other method of contraception. But when her sixth child was only five months pregnant again, this time Allison was worried because her doctor had told her that her uterine wall was thin. Her uterine wall had become thin as a result of the cuts and scarring of five previous C-sections. After some ultrasounds, Allison was diagnosed with placenta privia, and another ultrasound showed that she had placenta accreta. Consequently, doctors had to perform a hysterectomy to remove her uterus. Five days before the scheduled date for the cesarean section, Allison began to bleed and she rushed to hospital. On the day of delivery, Allison's operation was a success, and after delivery, they performed hysterectomy. However, there were complications. Allison was bleeding. After the bleeding stopped, she received a transfusion of 13 units. She did not remember taking her baby for the first time. She could not meet her until several days later. Despite the difficulties, Allison and her daughter recovered and returned home healthy with their large family. Which of these stories was your favorite? If you have any similar stories, share them in the comment section. I'll talk to you in the next video.